Hello and welcome to another video here on AV Forums. I am Phil Hinton, I'm the editor and I've been since 2003. In this video, we're going to have a look at the best settings for the LG G1 Evo OLED TV. And we're going to look at the best out of the box settings for SDR, that's standard dynamic range, as well as HDR. And we're also going to look at some of the best settings for Dolby Vision. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is bring up all settings. And because we're out of the box and we haven't done anything to the TV, it does ship in the eco mode. So we need to change this setting. So we're going to go into that, press once, and we're going to go down to filmmaker mode. So click on filmmaker mode. And as you can see, it changes the white balance straight away on that. The other thing we need to do is we need to go into support, click on there, and we need to go into energy saving, click on that. And we want to change energy saving to off. So now that we've corrected the energy saving and we've taken it out of eco, we're into filmmaker mode. We go into advanced settings here. Now we've got a brightness first of all, and you should find that the OLED pixel brightness, this used to be the panel luminance, uh, they've just renamed it for this year. And this is set at 25, which is 100 nits out of the box. Um, so this is for really dark room viewing. Uh, for film and TV material. So this is in a room where you have a little bit of bias light maybe behind the, the set, but all your other lights are switched off. Uh, not everybody lives in surroundings like that. So you can go into the OLED pixel uh, brightness selector and take it all the way up to 100 if you want. Um, just make sure that uh, you get it to match the room that you're in, in terms of light. Um, you don't need to go into any other picture mode. Filmmaker mode is perfect for this. So just set it so it's correct for your room. I'm going to come out of this. You can leave contrast and you can leave screen brightness or brightness uh, at the default settings. Uh, auto dynamic contrast, we're going to leave that off. Peak brightness, uh, that needs to be high for HDR, but as we're in SDR, we don't need that on. Black level, you can leave that on auto. Uh, you don't need to uh, change that, it will pick up uh, what the signal is. And I motion care, we don't need that either, so that is switched off. The beauty of filmmaker mode is that it will switch everything into the correct picture mode for us and the correct settings, and it'll switch uh, all the unwanted processing off. So, color depth that's your color saturation, we're going to leave that at default, we're going to leave tint at default. Uh, we can't change the colour gamut in this setting. Uh, this is Filmmaker Mode, so it'll grey that out. It's uh, selected the correct one. Um, then you've got Fine Tune, which is your CMS, or your colour management system. Again, they've changed that this year. And then we've got a white balance. So these two, you need uh, a meter, profile meter, and software to set. You can't set those by eye, uh, so we'll leave them at default as well. So coming out of that, we'll go into Clarity. And uh, this is where our sharpness and super resolution and so on is is in this menu so sharpness you can leave that at 10 I, I prefer to go down to five personally but 10 out of the box at default you can leave it at that and that's what filmmaker mode comes in and you also got super resolution which is switched off that's uh, sharpening we don't need that noise reduction and end point noise reduction again uh, we want to see all the fine details so we don't want that scrubbing out using the noise reduction so smooth gradation you could switch that on um, if you want to that gets rid of a lot of the color stepping that you sometimes see in skies and so on cinema screen uh, you want to leave that on uh, because that is the correct cajun detection for um, 24 frames per second and other material that you're watching so it makes sure that motion is correct and of course we're in filmmaker mode so true motion is switched off now if you don't like uh, judder or you really pick up on judder what you can do is you can go into true motion there's a new setting in here called cinematic movement um, it is interpolation but it's done in such a way that it prioritizes real frames rather than made up frames um, and LG say it looks smoother without adding soap opera effect. I've tried it. I am very susceptible to soap opera effect. I see interpolation as soon as it's added on, but your mileage may vary. So you could try that if you want to, but if you want to stick to everything and see everything as it's intended to be seen and mastered, um, that's all the settings that we're going to set um, for filmmaker mode. And we're going to click on apply to all inputs. So every time we watch SDR content, uh, it's going to be available in all of our inputs when we select Filmmaker Mode. So we're going to move on to HDR. So moving on to HDR10 content, um, and once again, we are going to select Filmmaker Mode. 
this is the most accurate out of the box to the standards. Um, and it's the one where uh, you just need to flick into filmmaker mode and it switches all unnecessary processing off, switches off true motion and motion smoothing and so on. If you want to have a play about and you want a little bit more brightness because filmmaker mode is around about 618 nits uh, peak brightness, if you want to get 745 nits of peak brightness and still remain at D65, you could go into cinema, uh, which will up the brightness slightly compared to filmmaker mode but we're going to stick to filmmaker mode because out of the box it is the most accurate one button press settings for us um, aspect ratio you need to set that to just scan and make sure that just scan is on you do that for sdr content as well and then moving into advanced settings and most of these settings should be switched to where we want them um, so oled pixel brightness will be at 100 contrast at 100 because we're in hdr 10 mode uh, if it is too bright for your room, if you're in a really dark room, then you can, you know, take the uh, the pixel brightness down a little bit to save eye fatigue. But um, these should be fine for most settings. We're going to leave screen brightness at default. Auto dynamic contrast, we don't need that adding in. Um, it just adds more brightness and it'll blow highlights out and so on. So if you want accurate images, switch that off. HDR tone mapping, uh, the jury is out on this. If you want to see the content as it's intended to be seen by the filmmaker then switch it off if you want to have it do the tone mapping for you and pick out highlights and change the image uh, in a dynamic manner then you can switch it on but just be aware that uh, you're not quite following what the uh, creator intended but you may prefer that look it's entirely up to you on that one and then peak brightness is going to be high Next, we're going to move to the color. And again, we shouldn't have to change anything in here. It should already be auto or switched off. Uh, so color depth, we're going to leave that at default. Tint at default. Color gamut, it's set to auto detect. You could go in there and switch it to native if you desire. Um, leaving it to auto, I've found that it does work. It picks up what kind of material is being fed from the source and it's worked every time that I've tried it in terms of color gamut. Fine tune, again, this is the color management system. We don't need to touch that. And white balance, we can leave that alone as well because out of the box in filmmaker mode, it is incredibly accurate as it is. And of course, if we want to set these properly, you cannot do it by eye. You need a profile meter and you need software uh, to set those settings. So we're gonna leave those alone. And then we're going to move on to clarity and again everything should be set up the way we want it in here for hdr so sharpness at the default of 10 and then we've got super resolution noise reduction mpeg noise, MPEG noise reduction off smooth gradation again you can add that in if you uh, feel that you have too much uh, color stepping in your skies or whatever but uh, if you're feeding it 4k material or even uh, Blu-ray HD material, you shouldn't need that switching on. Uh, cinema screen, again, this is for the uh, motion and it makes sure uh, that you are getting correct. 5.5 pull down for 24 frames per second material, so you leave that switched on. And then true motion, again, is switched off by default in the filmmaker mode. But as we said, for SDR, you can, of course, move it to the cinematic movement setting, um, which tries to smooth out uh, motion without adding in any soap opera effects. So again, you could try that one if you wish. So that is HDR10 and we're going to move on to Dolby Vision next. So let's move on to Dolby Vision and um, we're going to do two settings in here. Uh, the first one is for those of you who want accurate images and to see content as it was meant to be seen and that's the cinema setting. So we're going to select cinema uh, from the list that we have here. We'll come back to cinema home in a second because that's Dolby Vision IQ. So first of all, we're going to do cinema, which is, like I say, the most accurate out of the box and you shouldn't need to change anything in here, uh, but we'll go in and just check anyway and make sure everything is set correctly. So uh, the pixel brightness and the contrast should be at 100. We're going to leave default screen brightness. Uh, automatic dynamic contrast should be off, peak brightness on. We can't adjust gamma because obviously it's Dolby Vision, so it sets it as well as the black level and eye care or eye motion care is uh, or motion eye care even is switched off so next we're going to move into color and again we shouldn't need to change anything in here color depth and tint at default and again fine tune which is the color management system or cms and the white balance uh, we don't touch those 
uh, you can only adjust those with a profile meter and software uh, where you can go in and change the Dolby Vision and calibrate it. But it should be accurate out of the box in this setting. And then into clarity, again, we're going to leave everything at default here. Uh, with everything most of most of it switched off anyway apart from cinema screen which is for 24 frame playback and again true motion is switched off and again if you want to experiment with cinematic movement you can do that as well in here so the next one we're going to go to is cinema home and this is for Dolby Vision IQ now Dolby Vision IQ uses a light sensor in the TV it measures the light in the room and then it adjusts the picture using the dynamic metadata from the Dolby Vision content uh, to make sure that you can see everything in a bright room. So it adjusts the brightness and it'll ramp the brightness up, but without uh, ruining the black levels and so on, it, it will still try and stick to the dynamic metadata and keep color and everything else the way it should be. Um, but there are a few issues with this and we'll go into the advanced settings and I'll show you what the issues are with this. So if you go into clarity, you'll see that most of these uh, picture processing features uh, are switched on. We don't want these because it will scrub fine detail and so on. So we uh, want to switch all of these off. And of course we can do that this year. Uh, last year's uh, Dolby IQ settings on the LG TVs, you had to go the long way around this, uh, but we can go straight in here and switch most of these off, which is what we'll do. And we come down to the bottom here and we can't move it uh, out of cinematic movement, uh, true motion. You can see it's grayed out there. Um, and this was the issue we had last year because all of these settings up here, which we want to switch off, uh, they were also grayed out. So what you need to do here is if you want to uh, switch true motion off and use Dolby Vision IQ. So you just want to use the light sensor and you don't want anything else uh, switched on. So what we need to do here is we need to come out and we need to go to the AI service menu. We're gonna click on this and we're gonna change auto genre selection to off. Leave the brightness on because that is the sensor, the light sensor. So you leave that one on, but we switch genre selection off. We can then go back to picture, advanced settings, and then go to clarity. And now we should be able to change true motion. So we can go in there and we can switch true motion off. And that means that we now can use Dolby Vision IQ with just a light sensor and everything else is at default or switched off, uh, which is what we want. We want all the settings so we can watch the content as, it, as intended, but in a brighter room. We can use the light sensor and the uh, it'll use the metadata and the source material to make sure that the image looks as good as it can. So that's all our settings set up. Uh, we're ready to go uh, with the LG G1. Don't forget, you can read the full in-depth review of the LG G1 on avforums.com or you can find the video review on our YouTube channel. And if you like these settings videos and the other videos that we do, then please do subscribe to the channel and like the video. It really does help us out. And you can also find our Patreon details in the description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.